In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new ESC from T Motor. Actually, noise testing this ESC. It's a T Motor F45 amp 20x20 with the FETs kind of the same style as a Hollybro would do here. We're going to do its noise testing. However, we've done something slightly different, so we're going to cover that as well today. And there are a couple things you need to take into consideration before you actually go and purchase this thing. So before we get into that, first of all, if you have any problems with anything FPV related or you need any help, go download Ask FPV at Android or iOS store. And you can get help from the community. There's no ads. I've created that application because I can't answer everybody. And it's just amazing to see everybody helping each other. We have over 600 users now, and it's just constantly growing. The iOS has been released. And I've also created a social media platform just for FPV pilots. It's still growing. It's roughly 400 users now and around 20 to 30 active users uh, each go depending on the time zone really um, so yeah check that out it's currently growing and hopefully it'll be a very good place for everybody to sell meet and even sell their frames or designs or share or collaborate so it'll be really cool because it's a targeted place so let's get started here the t-motor f45 amp esc now out of the box it comes with the lois arc capacitor pre-installed soldered into place and you're just gonna have to use it that way so that's the way I've tested it. I didn't test without the low ESR capacitor because 98% of the people that are going to be purchasing this will use it with that capacitor. Now let's get into the testing here. So on the left here, we have throttle noise level test, which is I just have it run on specific throttle levels to see the amount of noise at each throttle level. Usually around this area, we have the highest, but in this case, we don't. And the reason for that is because the low ESR capacitor is installed. But we do see these little two uh, hiccups right here, which I'll get into. So this is 10%, this is 25% throttle, 50, 75, and 100% throttle. Now these little hiccups kept happening every once in a while. And this is between 10% throttle, and we could say like 53% uh, throttle. So 53%, and we could say 10%. But in real life, there's a really slim possibility you'll notice that because um, this is a script changing the throttle so quickly that a human can't do that. And that's why maybe we're getting to see that. But sometimes that is a precursor to some possible issues in the future. And again, it might not be. And what do I mean by that? Well, there, I've had ESCs that tested like this before. And they were the DYS, I think, Aria Slims. They used to do this quite a lot sometimes. However, I did end up giving them away to a couple friends of mine. And they lasted a pretty long time. And they never even noticed any of this stuff. And they ended up dying from being used for so long in a short circuit or whatnot. And they were actually used on a 6S. So this doesn't mean that there's going to be a problem, but it just means to keep something in your mind. And again, these tests do not tell you the longevity, the durability, or anything of that nature. These are just to put numbers, just to give you an idea of how it's going to perform out of the box. Other issues, bugs, or anything, this, this, you know, some might show here, but not everything could show. So just keep that in mind. This is just helping you have an educated purchase when you go or educated guess when you go make your purchase here. And that is the whole idea of these videos. Now, uh, so the throttle noise level test, we had a peak to peak five volts, which is really good, actually, really, really good, especially with the low ESR capacitor. So that means that it's set up pretty nicely, I guess. So that's a really good result. Voltage spike, 17 volts. The base was 16.8. So that's a 0.2 volt voltage spike voltage drop is down to 12 volts that's because the current was going through and that's the battery sagging right there so this is all pretty much acceptable here actually it's pretty good for a 20 by 20 however i still would not recommend this on a high demanding 6s 5 inch setup nor a 4s high demanding setup so the five inches basically a high demanding five inch i would not recommend it uh, i would probably recommend like a 6s scene whoop this would do great um the four incher these types of things that's where i would use this one on now if we move the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers this is actually pretty clean but again don't forget the low ASR capacitor is installed here and we had a peak to peak of 6.8 volts that means it was just fluctuating 6.8 volts from the base of 16.8 volts. So that's a really good thing. You always wanna see this line as thin as possible here. Now, if we look at the voltage spike, 17.2 volts was the maximum. So it only jumped up four volts. Again, that's 0.4 of a volt. So that is really good. Voltage drop down to 10.2 volts right there. So we can see that it just dipped down to 10.2, which is pretty acceptable. That means the power delivery is there. That's the voltage sagging from the battery because it's doing the current. Uh, the voltage spikes is the ones that we really have to keep an eye on also, and also high frequency noise. Because some ESCs actually look like this. 
Some ESCs would actually look like that. So this is pretty good right now, especially with the low ESR capacitor. Some some shitty ESCs with low ESR capacitor uh, will not do uh, this good as well. So that, that shows it's pretty clean. It does have some decent filtration on board as well. Um, so that's really it. That's all I could currently say about this. It's okay. It's a nice one. But again, I'm not answering longevity. Uh, I'm also not recommending you put this on a five inch high demanding setup. Keep that in mind. And um, yeah, and just make sure you keep that low ESR capacitor. And the reason why they kept this low ESR capacitor, they gave it to you pre-installed, is because it needs it. It really does need it. Because it, they know that some people out there will probably try to put this on a 6S 1900 KV, uh, 5 inch or even a 6 inch. And next thing you know, you're going to blow a FET or two or, or just have some really bad noise. So yeah, that's the reason I think why they have that pre-installed. And I think it's a smart move as well, not to rely on the customer to actually install it. And it is a, a Rubicon. Uh, 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor that has installed this. This is the video that we did the other day where I did the setup guide on the whole stack. And well, everything is linked down below. If you could click those, those do greatly support the channel, enable me to keep making content like this. And I also do have a Patreon. Come join. I do a ton of crazy cool stuff there and you get a lot of perks and you also support the channel. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I've never said that before, but yeah, just do that, please. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.